episode 9 of .NET Concept of the Week, where I explain a concept related to .NET programming every week in a short video. This time we are going to talk about WebAssembly and Blazor. Last week we talked about ASP.NET Core Signaler, which is still alpha, so the first version hasn't been shipped yet. Now this week we go even further, so before we start this video, I would like to warn you that everything I show you is in a super early stage. Microsoft calls Blazor an experiment and they explicitly suggest to not plan your next big application on this. But still the technology is very interesting and in my opinion it's definitely worth a video. Also I would like to mention that the content of this video is mainly based on an NDC talk of Steve Sanderson. Alright, so in the next few minutes we are going to talk about WebAssembly and then we move on to Blazor which is basically built on top of WebAssembly. Then we are going to write a few c -sharp lines which we run within the browser with Blazor. And then at the end I will take a plain HTML and JavaScript application and I will replace part of the JavaScript code with c -sharp that we run in the browser. Alright, so let's start with WebAssembly. What is WebAssembly? WebAssembly is a web standard that defines a binary format and a corresponding assembly-like text format for executing code in a web page. The goal is to execute code nearly as fast as running native machine code. So WebAssembly basically complements JavaScript as a lower level language and today every major browser supports it. Now you may ask, okay, but what does this have to do with .NET? Well, WebAssembly itself has nothing to do with .NET, it is a standard to run code within the browser, but stay with me because we will end up with c -sharp code. Now enough from slides, let's see some code. So there is a compiler called mscripten which can compile C code into WebAssembly. I have a very simple C code here, I have two numbers, I print them, then I add 1 to 42 and then I print the result. This is plain C code and we can compile this into machine code with for example GCC or with Visual Studio. I guess most of the viewers already did something like that. And since that has nothing to do with web, we won't do it here. Now I already installed mscripten on my machine and with that we can also compile this code into WebAssembly. I have a command line here, now emcc is the mscripten compiler, I pass the C source file to it and with minus s wesm equals 1, I tell the compiler to compile it to WebAssembly and with the minus o hello.html, I also tell the compiler to generate an HTML page to host the WebAssembly code and also a JavaScript glue code that loads the WebAssembly into this web page. And here is the result, this hello.wasm file is the WebAssembly module and it contains the compiled C code. This is a binary file, so it's a little bit hard to read, but if we look for the string sum, then as you can see, here is where we print the sum, and this string before that should be also familiar from the C code. So the point is, this is really my C code compiled into WebAssembly. Now let's run this. The generated HTML file also shows what gets printed on the console, but let's ignore the HTML and see what we get on the console. I also open the C code. So this line is this one from the C code and here we print 42 and this is the sum 43 as the result of the last printfn line. Now there is one last thing I would like to show here. So right now we have a binary file here which we cannot really read. The compiler can also generate a more human readable file. In order to do this I pass minus g to the compiler. So let me quickly recompile. It's done. Now let's go back to the folder. As you can see we have a few new files here. This WAST file is the more human readable version of the compiled WebAssembly module. This is not binary, this is a text file and you can see the WebAssembly syntax here. This is basically a stack based language, it's not meant to write code directly within this syntax, but this is rather for debugging purposes and also for tools it can be very useful. The other interesting file is the .map file, this is here to help us debugging the code. Theoretically we can go to the browser, set a breakpoint within the C code and debug it because this map file would map the WebAssembly binary to the C source file. Unfortunately this doesn't really work today or at least I didn't manage to get it work properly so we skip this part. Alright so what we saw here is that it is possible to compile C code into WebAssembly. Now one C code basis, for example Mono which is a .NET runtime. 
And guess what? The Mono team decided to compile Mono into WebAssembly. This here is the announcement post from Miguel from last year and since then they made huge progress. So with this we have a .NET runtime in the browser. Now the next thing we need to build client-side code in C-Sharp is a framework which enables us to work with the document object model from C-Sharp. And this is where the work of Steve Sanderson comes into the game. So he started Blazor, which is an experimental web UI framework using C-Sharp with Razor and HTML. It runs the c sharp slash Razor code within the browser on top of WebAssembly. This here is the Blazor repository on GitHub and I already cloned it. Since there is no NuGet package for Blazor at the moment, we are going to work within this repository directly. As you can see, there are quite a few sample applications here. The one that we are going to use now is the standalone app. To get an idea about Blazor, let me start it and then let's go to the counter sample. We have a button here and when we click the button, it increments a number. All this is implemented in C-Sharp and it runs in the browser. Let's take a look at the code. As you can see, this is basically Razor syntax, but please keep in mind, we don't have a server side here. All this runs in the browser. We have a paragraph here, which prints current count and the value of the current count variable, which is defined here. And then here is the button. Once the user clicks it, it calls the increment count method, which is a C sharp method defined here. So as you can see, this is real stuff. This is really C sharp in the browser. Let's quickly look at the network tab here and let's see how this works. We see that mono.js gets loaded and this is the glue code that loads the mono WebAssembly module. So this is the .NET runtime, which is compiled into WebAssembly. And then on top of that, all these managed .NET assemblies get executed. And here we can see the script block, which tells where the entry point is of the .NET code and what references we use here. Now, one last thing I would like to add here is that in this case, only Mono gets compiled into WebAssembly and then the compiled Mono code compiles the .NET DLS at runtime. So still we have managed assemblies here that you normally have with a .NET application. The Mono team also works on an AOT compiler, so on an ahead of time compilation feature, which would compile this DLS also into WebAssembly. All right, so this is how it works. Now let's play a little bit with the Blazor syntax. So let's create a new page where we are going to implement a to-do list. This is going to be a simple Razor page, which will completely run within the browser. Additionally, I also create a to-do manager class. This one will be very simple. We just return static data here, but of course you could also fetch the data here from a database or from the web. Now let's go back to the CSHTML file and let's implement the to-do functionality. First, I create a function block and I declare a variable here, which I populate by calling the get all to-dos method on the to-do manager. Again, this is c -sharp code that we run in the browser. Then let's show this data on the page. I create a for each loop here where we loop through the items and I show the text property of every to-do instance. This is plain Razor. So if you worked with ASP.NET before, then I guess this looks very familiar to you. Additionally, I also print the number of to-do list on the top of the page. Now let's start this. So the c -sharp code was executed in the browser. We have our two to-do instances here and we also see the number of to-dos. Now let's extend this a little bit. I add a button here. Now instead of registering a JavaScript function on the onClick event, I want to register a C# -sharp method here. For this, I use this syntax. So this one here is the name of the C# -sharp method that is going to be called when the user clicks the button. Let's create this method. Of course, we also need an input field to get the new to-do item. So let's also add this. With this bind syntax, I can bind the text that the user entered to the C# -sharp variable. In this case, I call the C# -sharp variable new to-do item. Let's also create this variable. And with that, we have everything on the UI. We just need to finish the add new item C# -sharp method. I simply add a new item to the list and clear the variable that is bound to the input field. Of course, this would be also the point where we persist the data, for example, through the to-do manager. We skip this part to save time. Now let's take a look at the app in the browser. So I enter a new to-do item, I click to add, and as you can see, the new item was added to the list. Now let's do one last thing. There is an isDone property on the to-do class. Let's create a checkbox 
and bind this Eastern property to the checkbox. To see the effect of this, let's also modify this line here. So instead of showing the number of to-do items, I show the number of items that are not done yet. Let's run this again. And as you can see, once I check the checkbox, the c -sharp code that calculates the to-do items, which are not done yet, is automatically executed. So this is Blazor, which enables us to execute c -sharp code within the browser on top of WebAssembly. All right, so let's move on to the last demo. Let me tell you a quick story for this. So I'm a co-organizer of a local .NET meetup, and last time we gave away a conference ticket for one of the attendees. We have a Facebook group and we also have an account on meetup.com. So we have the list of the people who were present at the meetup. So we only had to randomly select the winner. Now, in order to do this, we used a very cool tool from Stefan Baumgartner, who is a great web developer. So huge thanks for Stefan for this cool tool. Now this one is on CodePen and you can basically enter a bunch of names here. And this JavaScript code will select one person. From privacy reasons, I have dummy names here. Now let me show you how this works. Isn't this cool? Now the only problem was that we are a .NET meetup and there is no .NET code in this stuff. I copied all of this code into a single HTML file. So this one will be our starting point. And I guess you already figured out where we are going. Now this JavaScript code uses jQuery and it does a bunch of DOM manipulation. Unfortunately, Blazor at this point doesn't really enable us to change specific DOM elements, or at least I didn't manage to do it. So we leave that part of the JavaScript code. But this one here selects the winner. What I'm going to do is that I will create a C -sharp method and I will also store the two lists in C -sharp, and I will randomly select the winner also from C -sharp, with the help of Blazor. There is this monosanity sample here, which we are going to misuse to select the winner in C -sharp instead of JavaScript. The good thing about this project is that it already has JavaScript web pair functions that call C -sharp functions. And we are going to reuse this infrastructure. So let's first implement the C -sharp part. I do this in the example CS file. I remove everything that we don't need. Then I create two lists. These are the meetup attendees that registered either through Facebook or through meetup.com. I also create a method that selects a random person from the two lists. We use link you here. We basically concatenate the two lists. We filter out duplicates and then we choose the winner. Additionally, we also remember the winner and we exclude that person from the next round. Now again, this is C sharp code and this will run in the browser. Now let's go to JavaScript and let's trigger this method from the JavaScript code. For this, I basically remove everything from this file and I paste the original HTML and JavaScript code from Stefan into this file. Now, one thing which I leave here from the original code is this part. This basically hooks up interop between JavaScript and C -sharp. Awesome. Now let's delete the JavaScript code that we moved to C -sharp. So we don't need these two lists. We can also remove this part here. And here is the interesting part. Here is where we select the winner. Like I said, this page already has glue code between JavaScript and C -sharp. There is this invoke mono method function, which calls into the C -sharp code. I simply point it to the getWinner.net method that we created a moment ago. So this JavaScript line will call this C -sharp method. And then I change the text of this header to the name of the winner, which comes from the C -sharp code. Basically that's it. So let me start this. And as you can see, the only difference is that this time we select the winner in C -sharp. Now the obvious question is, does this make sense? Well, to me it does because A, it's cool and B, there is .NET code in it. Now would I do this in production code? Of course not. This is very early stage stuff, but I think it's extremely cool. Now let me show you one last great thing about this. As you can see, we don't have error handling in this C -sharp code. So the winner list always grows. And at some point, this part will be an empty list when all the six people run from the two lists. Now let me go back to the browser and let me execute this six times and then once again. So this happens when you run the code seven times. As you can see, we have a perfect call stack here that tells us where the problem is. It starts in JavaScript and it ends up in system.random 
which is a .NET class. And this is quite impressive. So this is basically a core stack from JavaScript into the .NET framework. All right, so this is Blazor and WebAssembly. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Many thanks for watching and next week I will explain another .NET concept.